All right, well, welcome everyone to Home Office Hours Live with Vistprint. Thank you so much for joining us today. Home Office Hours is a series of live discussions on timely topics, and we'll be featuring guest speakers along with our very own Vistaprint team members. Our goal with the series is to provide you with education and advice for surviving these unprecedented times during the COVID-19 crisis. We know that small business needs have changed and we wanted to help. So we created Home Office Hours as a way to connect during this time when we're all spending a lot of time inside and we're dealing with various challenges when we're working from home. We've tapped our colleagues to help answer some of the questions that you're all having as business owners. So today to talk about shifting your content strategy, I have with me Carrie Kirpin, the founder and CEO of Likeable Media, and Robin Van Cura, returning guest panelist from Vistaprint. Robin, can you say hello? Hi. Hey, thanks Robin. And Carrie, can you give a shout out to our audience so they know who you are? Hi everyone, I'm Carrie Kirpin, CEO of Likeable Media, and I'm thrilled to be here with Vistaprint, helping small businesses however we can. Awesome, thank you, we're so happy to have you. So before we get started, a couple of housekeeping items. We are going to be taking questions at the end, but please feel free to submit them throughout the session. You can use the Q&A button down there at the bottom of your screen. And we'll also be sending the recording out via email after we wrap up. So let's get to it and set the stage. Carrie, can you tell us what is the one best practice that every single brand and every single business should have top of their mind right now? Well, I think first when you're thinking about content, it's really about how you're communicating the message of who you are and what you do. And in this time, in this moment, and this is a best practice in general, but particularly right now, you want to think about how you can be helpful. And that could be communicating content that is about how you're shifting, like many businesses or uh, fashion businesses are shifting to be able to make masks, or it could simply be about how you can bring a, a relatable smile to your community right now. It's really about how you can be helpful. And if you can't be helpful, why are you sharing that content? Yes, absolutely agree. I think that really simplifies it down and gives you a very easy framework when you're looking at your content right now. So we discussed in another panel, actually, the idea of revisiting the past content that you already have. Robin, can you talk to us a little bit about how you can reassess pre-existing content that you already had uh, for this current time? And how can you look at updating it for relevance and helpfulness for right now? Sure, that's great. Thanks um, so much. So now's the time to take a step back and determine what content is most helpful right now for your customers and pair that with the right tone. And this is relevant for all your content touch points from your site and your email and your social posts and your marketing materials. You want to have a consistent look, feel, and message across everything. Um, and additionally, that tone is so super important. You want to be authentic to yourself and your brand, and you need to focus on matching your tone to the time in which we're living right now. So when you think about the content that you have, um, much of it was built pre-COVID-19. It was built during a time when you were um, handling your business a different way or talking to your customers in a different way. And so you need to go back to that content now and think about what do my customers really um, need right now? How can I be helpful? Just the way Carrie was describing, how can I be helpful to them now? And pull out that content that you have that you believe fits that need. And then I would recommend that you also go back and take another stab at it from a tone perspective and make sure that you're, you're really speaking in a way that makes sense today. Robin is exactly right. And looking at you know, when we talk about content, Robin mentioned um, websites, and you can think about emails and all of these things that many of us use. Some of our businesses out there are so small that social 
is also their primary connection to their community. I've seen even in my own community, um, a local deli being able to communicate that guess what, now they're not only selling their sandwiches and delivering them and all the great things, but they're also providing people with actual supplies like milk and butter if you're out. You know, people are using social media, small businesses are using social media to be very helpful whenever they can. And, and it should carry across all of your content for sure. But when you start with social media, it allows you um, to be immediate, right? Social media is quick and easy to update. And as you kind of roll that back into each piece, um, start with what you can do quickly. What Robin said is exactly right. Checking for tone. You know, we talk about making people smile. Some things that made people smile pre-COVID uh, may not be that funny right now. Right. And so like, or that cutesy memes that worked before mm, might not work so well now. So it's really checking. Robin made a great point there about checking for tone uh, and then making sure it goes across all of your content channels. Awesome. Thank you both. So we've also touched on this in our other webinars. So we hope the theme is becoming clear. You should really be doing everything that you can right now to make sure that you and your business stay afloat. But Robin, are there any things that you should really avoid saying right now? And where should you focus instead? Yeah, uh, don't be sales as usual. That's probably the most important thing I could say. Your friends and family discounts that once might, that might have been your best friend and your best marketing tool today could backfire. Carrie was just talking about that. Um, you know, some of these things just aren't as funny or not the right tone or not the right message as, as they once were before. But on the other hand, now is an awesome time to think outside of the box and do things slightly differently based on a few key new norms. So for example, we know now that people are looking for things to do with their families at home. So take your delivery pizza business and turn it into a, um, a business of entertainment and deconstruct that pizza and send it to the homes in that fashion instead a totally great idea that, that you're seeing from pizza places today. The other thing we're seeing is that people are also in this really great um, charitable place of wanting to do good. Um, they love seeing it and I hope, it, I hope we keep um, continuing to be this way. In a previous met, uh, webinar, I mentioned the donation page set up by a local restaurant to allow people to donate meals to nurses and doctors to be picked up at the restaurant a perfect example of this. It's a nice way for a restaurant to shift their messaging and their conversation. And so it becomes such a great focus at this time. It also, though, is a great way for you to start building some of that amazing content. So for example, imagine posting some of the pictures of those nurses picking up the meals and thanking the community for their support. Or imagine showcasing some of those great meals, you know, and, and showing people the great things that they're going to be buying for the nurses or the piles of, of takeout orders that are collecting. Um, all of these things, pull back the curtain a little bit for, for your business, allow people to see behind the scenes of how you're really um, managing over these times and allow them to be your best advocate. And if your customers are your advocates, they, they, will, they will take care of you and they will be with you through all of this. I totally agree with this. Um, in terms of no-nos, it's very challenging for small businesses right now to think that they can't sell because without sales, we have no lifeline. As a small business owner, my, I know for me, my first panic when this happened was, how are we going to generate new business? What are we going to do? And every small business owner, whether you have 50 employees or two, uh, feels this. And so the idea that Raman mentioned, which is you don't have to not talk about wanting to survive as a business or not wanting people to support your business. It's totally natural and appropriate to want people to support your business. But how you do it right now is essential. So what she said about business as usual, when I get an email with a business as usual discounts 
from, especially from a smaller business, I get frustrated because there's such an opportunity. Like for the deli or for any, any of these pieces that Robin mentioned, any of those businesses, the pizza place, like that's a pivot that's slight, that still allows you to sell. I don't care if you're selling me gift cards for future dates. That's great. As long as you're acknowledging the situation and you're not going business as usual right now, because business is not usual for any of us. And so acknowledging that um, and really also just thinking about making sure that any content you put out um, doesn't feel insensitive. So think about how you feel as a person. You know, one of the things is if you're a person um, working at all, you're a person of privilege right now. If you're a person who's able to socially distance, you're a person of privilege. And so if you're a person of privilege right now who is able to socially distance, all of us are in an equal situation. We're all sitting at home. We're all stuck here. So it allows you to put yourself in your customer's mind in a way that you might not have been able to before because we're all in a similar mindset there. And so put yourself in their position and imagine how every word that comes out on the internet from you would make you feel. And I think that that's really, if it doesn't pass that test, uh, then don't do it. That's, that's awesome advice, Carrie. I have an example that um, might bring this to life a little bit. There is a local dry cleaner who has decided, you know, their seamstress um, skills that they decide to make the masks now um, for some of their local um, customers. And it's a really good example of what you can do that's going to be really impactful during these times or what's not going to be so impactful. So taking an example like that, if you went out with a message or if she, she went out with a message and said, um, you know, while supplies last, you know, um, lowest price in town, um, you know, um, we've got masks, those kinds of messages, it would come across really a bit um, self-serving to her business and a little cold. But if she instead went out there with a message that was more about, we are taking this time to pivot our business to really help um, the people in our community with these great needs for masks and we have them available. If, you know, if interested, you know, contact me, let me know. She's still ultimately going to get the sale out of them. They don't have to be charitably donated. She absolutely, sales are important. Small businesses are trying to stay in business. They're doing things that are different for their businesses to keep them going. But this is kind of the example of a tonal um, change that makes all the difference during this time. I also think there are lots of small businesses uh, that have, I mean, most of us have never experienced anything like this before. So sometimes you may slip with your content. You may do something that's slightly off tone. And I think if you're called out on it, I think this is important for the no-no section, like acknowledge that and shift. Like you're learning, let your community help give you feedback. And I think that's, that's essential. If you're a local market and you're um, talking about your social distancing and your social distancing isn't um, truly up to snuff and your community recognizes it, take their feedback and implement the changes both into the content and into the operations of your business. This is a great time to get community feedback and to be humble because we are all in this space where we can use the feedback from the community. And so I would say um, take this time also not to get defensive, which is hard because um, when we're struggling, which so many small businesses are, it's so hard not to be um, in a really foul mood. <laughs> and so it's really leaving yourself, leaving yourself open um, to that feedback can really help too. That's great feedback. Thank you so much. I think those are really great tips um, and great examples. And like you said, it's not usual business right now. So Carrie, what should businesses be thinking about now that they're working to and scrambling really to create new helpful content, even if the rest of their operation is totally not business as usual? Okay, so Remember how I told you just before about how if you make a mistake, you can own up to it and really have these types of really transparent dialogues. I believe that this is a time where we can experiment a little bit, less so with messaging and more because we have to be very sensitive, but more so with networks. Like if you 
this might be a time to experiment. If your audience, if you have a younger audience and they're on TikTok and you had hesitated because you're going through, you know, all of these discussions with everyone. For me, I felt in a weird way, and I can only say this as a, as a small business, um, when I got into this space where I had these immense guardrails, right? All of a sudden I'm working from home. I have so many limits that I've never had before. In a way, it allowed me to be freer with my content. I'm trying stuff that I've never tried before. Why? Because I'm limited and I can't do business as usual. So why not film uh, some TikToks from home? Why not try a live? I mean, you guys, even you're, you're not so much a small business, but you're, this is what I would imagine way out of your comfort zones doing these frequently and being able to help, but, but trying it, it allows us to get a little scrappier uh, with what we're doing and test an experiment. And, and this is a time where I think now more than ever, um, everyone's given a little bit of grace, you know? So, so trying it, it doesn't have to be perfect because it can't be because we don't have professional editing in our homes. And, um, so, so give, give things a try again, focus on how you can be helpful, but maybe we can be helpful with showing how to properly wash hands on TikTok, or or a grocer or a local um, merchant can show how, or a takeout can show um how to wipe down the containers of food using really cute and in interesting uh, methods that they haven't before there, there's so many things that we can try um if you're focused on being helpful and focused on being unafraid to test yes. And I loved, I saw Likeable's own work from home bingo piece. Yes. That you put I thought that was awesome. Yeah. Very relevant and yeah. really hit home right now. Yeah. So just to fill people in, in case you haven't seen Likeable's work from home bingo, I, I'm really proud of the social content that Likeable has put out because um, we need to set a standard, right? Because we, we actually work on brand social media. And so as we have to show what we're doing and we looked to do things that were very relatable to the business community. So we set up a work from home bingo uh, where all the things you hear, like, are you muted? Are you muted? Or like any of these things. And when you hear them, you check it off and uh, just try to be very relatable and helpful and bring a smile. Awesome. I, I hope we didn't give that out to anyone watching this webinar today. <laughs> we probably will get a full bingo. Full bingo, Robin, from us. So hard. <laughs> right. Awesome. Thank you. So, Carrie, you actually mentioned this, this webinar here. And, Robin, let's get meta for a minute. Can you speak to that point, not only with the businesses that, that we help, but Vistaprint as a brand ourselves? And can you talk about the shifts that brands can make right now generating their content? Yeah, sure. So uh, I think it's really about determining how people are absorbing your content right now and then being in those places. Um, and this webinar Carrie just mentioned, um, where this is a perfect example for Vistaprint. Um, it was born out of a need to provide a platform to engage with small businesses and conversation and offer advice that is truly meaningful at the time. Uh, but we didn't have home office hours before COVID-19 struck. This was a, this is a brand new idea for us. I hope you're all enjoying it. Um, and I'd love your feedback. Um, but this is, this is really something new for us in an effort to really be able to hear your questions and provide some insightful um, ideas on how to move your business forward. Another example, we have our Small Business Stories podcast at Vistaprint. Another good example, um, we've changed our model to be less about how businesses got started and a key hurdle in their success and have now reached out to small businesses to hear more about their situation right now and with great tips on how they're making it through. Uh, Carrie said, be scrappy. Let me tell you, we are Vistaprint and, and there is a, there's a gentleman who is doing the podcast out of the closet in his bedroom. We are all making this work. No one is immune to this. We're all the same. Um, it's important that we all know that being scrappy and being creative, it's, it's, um, it's happening everywhere. So, um, so since our brand is focused on celebrating and supporting small businesses, we really tried to figure out how um, we can do that best in this new time. And um, everything isn't going to be a hit. Um, we, we've done some other things like a work from home series, which I'm excited about. I hope people enjoy it. It, some things are going to resonate, some things aren't. And, um, and I think Carrie mentioned this earlier as well. Just test, learn, 
embrace the imperfections. Don't be sensitive. Um, I think that's a hard one, but a great lesson learned. And get feedback. Um, think about where people are right now and how they're consuming that content, content differently and try to connect in those new ways would probably be the best advice I can give. But uh, as you can see with at Vistaprint here, we're, we're trying new things as well, just um, trying to find our best new norm. And I think you guys are doing a really great service to the small businesses that you work on, really fo and work with, uh, focusing on content that gives them practical and tactical tips, sharing from other small business owners how they're surviving. This is the stuff, this is the stuff that we need. Thank you, Carrie. And, you know, to Robin's point before, we, we absolutely want feedback on all of these new efforts. So please feel free, email us, tweet us, um, send us a message on Facebook. We, we absolutely want to hear what you think about this new content and how we're delivering it. I think it's, it's definitely the time to open up the full array of creative options. And I love your point, Carrie, about there's hopefully a little bit more grace out there right now uh, for us to embrace those imperfections, test and learn and get better. I think one practical question comes up for all of us and where should we look for resources right now for creating all of this new content and how can we get creative with creating assets? Well, um, there are lots and lots of resources. I can give you a few tips and then I can give you um, just a little plug. I think Likeable's blog, uh, which has shifted to focus on resources um, for things like creating content from home, has been doing a great job. The Likeable team has been pulling that together like crazy. Um, our blog is actually focused on helping to teach people what we do. So we do a lot of um, content for larger brands and it, it, the, the blog is designed to help you do that on your own, um, which is really an interesting and um, beautiful part of what we do at Likeable. Uh, specific things for creating content, now more than ever, it's been really um, easy to create content on your own as you experiment. I mean, even right on your iPhone, you can get a perfect and gorgeous shot. Uh, there are other things that you can use. I know you guys have some stuff that you, you, I want for sure you guys to do it justice because it's amazing, but uh, there's some great stuff. Like when you put out a podcast, uh, headliner I use is amazing. They pull out, they actually transcribe and pull out all of the information from the podcast. They take the best part where this, it sounds the most animated. They pull it out and put it into what's called an audiogram that you can share on stories. Uh, these are all, there are so many tools like that. Canva has some really great stuff uh, that allows you to create templates uh, in each socially appropriate format. Uh, there are so many technologies that allow you as a small business owner from home to do some of the stuff that in the past you might have had to hire designers to do. So I would say really um, tapping into some of these tools are really great. And I know Vistaprint has some of those too. Yeah, we do. Uh, we have a design team that can, you know, help you with um, branding or rebranding your business. We have some other tools that are coming down the pike, um, offering some free services um, to our small businesses um, via um, some social studio templates and so forth. Um, all of this is coming your way. Um, we're, we're just continuing to find different ways that we can um, make things easier for small businesses and um, definitely, definitely stay tuned. I love how focused you guys are on this and I love how quickly uh, you were really able um, to get this stuff in line to move forward. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not easy to pivot and, and watching you guys do that is really um, a, an amazing thing. Thanks. Um, I, th I think there's, there's also something, um, it's worth noting that, you know, for, for our brand anyway, we have, we are dedicated to small businesses and helping them succeed. We want to help small feel big. We want to, um, you know, help, help businesses in any way we can. And when COVID-19 hit and it affected small businesses in such a big way, it became very obvious to us what our role would be, and that was to really help small businesses um, to, to get through this and to give them those tools and resources to make it happen. So um, it's really been our 100% focus, um, and, and we'll, we'll continue to, 
to see what we can do going forward for anyone. Um, but obviously, send us <laughs> send us all your comments and let us know if there's anything else we can be doing. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. So I hope these insights have been helpful for everybody. I am going to turn it over to the audience for Q&A. Again, there is a button at the bottom of your screen that you can use to submit those questions. And I uh, will start us off now. Actually, Robin, this is building a little bit on what you were just talking about. So I will throw this to you. I have a lot of different types of customers and a very a varied community. Uh, so just like this print, sounds like this person has a lot of different types of people who are looking to them for services. And how can I make sure my content is helpful for all of them? Should I focus my efforts on a few key types? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I think what you need to think, what you need to be thinking about is again, going back to that question of how can I be helpful and making sure that you are helpful to whoever that targeted audience is. Sometimes I think we, um, we try and create a piece of content or some content resources that are going to touch upon or be good for everybody. And in doing so, we're not really helping anyone much. So it is really important. It's a great question because you should want to focus on those targets. But um, we don't have the resources to be so niche to go into every single one of them. So definitely, without knowing your exact business, I would say um, focus yourself on the couple top ones um, and, and really help them with what they need instead of being too general. I would say just building on that, you're going to want to look at um, letting your community guide you. I would look at who comments now on your social content in particular. Look at, you know, which segments they fall into and then direct yourself more likely than not in that direction. Because the reality is if you're talking to people who aren't engaging with you, it's kind of pointless. At another point in time, I would say segment your messaging and do targeted Facebook ads to go to specific targets at specific times. Um, but right now in a world where first of all, organic is waiting a little heavier, um, but also um, that it does in the past, it's always light, but it, it's definitely getting more pull right now. Um, and also it's a sensitive time. So really look at who's responding and then continue to build that content off of there. And then everything that you post, you should be paying attention to the analytics of that post. How much engagement did it get? Is it resonating? and lean into stuff that resonates and pull back from stuff that doesn't. Awesome, thank you both. So this next question, Carrie, maybe you can start us off and, sure. and Robin, uh, I think you might have some examples of what we've seen from a, some of our small businesses too. Uh, if you want to take a percentage of e-commerce sales to a local food bank, how should you approach that in messaging? Well, I think you should communicate it, um, what you're doing. And I think it's all about, I, Robin said earlier, um, pretty beautifully, like when you say best sales ever, like lowest prices ever, like none of that is good. Just, just moderating the tone and saying in an effort to give back, um, not only, you know, in an effort to give back, we are deciding to, or we have, we have partnered with and, and look at just a, a tone that, would resonate with your audience. And, and I think it's okay. You know, you have to share when you're doing good, for sure. Um, you, you, you absolutely should share when you're doing good and people want to see that. Just, just watch, I would say, watch the tone. Yeah, it's really about just the, the pride you're taking in being able to do more. Uh, and I think that's the message you wanna come across yeah. with. So Carrie, I'm 100% aligned. Yep, yeah. mm -hmm. that's great. Thank you guys. Next question here. Um, there is already so much content out there about coronavirus. How can I further differentiate to be original? And are there different platforms that I can post on to be different? Carrie, can you take this one for us? Sure. Um, first, the platforms I would focus on are the platforms where your audience is spending their time. And again, if you want to experiment and try something new, you can. Um, second, I don't think it's necessary to post about coronavirus unless you can be helpful specifically around your business with coronavirus. So if you're a tailor, um, like for instance, in my town, Nancy Sinaway Designs is this amazing tailor and she immediately switched to making masks. That's relevant to talk about coronavirus. Um, if you have no relevance to coronavirus, then you really don't need to directly talk about it unless you're talking about 
um, you know, the tone and how you, how you're talking about your business. Like you can shift your tone without directly being like, let's address the coronavirus. Um, because people are inundated with messaging about the coronavirus. So unless you are, you know, a food, uh, a restaurant talking about um, how you are working with your packaging and, and your safety and social distancing precautions, or you're a dog walker talking about, you know, how you're making sure that the leashes you're using, changing out the gloves when you're doing leashes or, you know, anything along those lines. Um, I don't, I don't know that you need to, you want to be careful of it being and feeling too opportunistic. Now, in terms of finding a lane of what to talk about during the time of coronavirus, that's a little different. So any business can find a lane of what they should be talking about right now. And again, that starts with how can I be helpful? And I'm worried that people will associate how can I be helpful with, well, I can't make masks. It doesn't mean that you have to make masks. What it means is that you have to um, figure out how to add value to your community in some way. And, and do so sensitively. People aren't um, thinking about buying high heels right now, for instance. So like talking about your high heels, if you're, if you're, sell, if you're a shoe store talking about your high heels may not be you know, the, the best fit. But if you're talking about um, how you've been able to convert shoes to be more comfortable for nurses, that could be great. Or you could talk about where is the first place you're gonna go out when you can wear your high heels again? Like it just needs to resonate and be relatable and interesting. Love that shoe example. Thank <laughs> you. Right? No, socks, only socks. <laughs> <laughs> socks and leggings, babe. Slippers, yeah. Slippers yeah. over here. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I'd add, Corey, and, and honestly it's probably more of a, um, of a highlight to carry versus a new thought. It, it's really just, Focus yourself on being relevant. Relevance is key. And, and relevance is about understanding what people are going through right now and the things that you're doing that might just hit, hit at that moment. Remember earlier I was talking about how people are at home with their kids and they're trying to figure out how to entertain them. You can make an ever so small switch to your business so that you can kind of click into that entertainment factor like I said about the pizza, or you're also seeing that with cupcake shops, doing deconstructed cupcakes. And there's a million different ideas. Those are just some. I, I will tell you, I've, I'm in the middle of doing a paint by number that I've never done in my life. Puzzles are abounding. So, um, and Carrie said her, you know, her um, bingo game, things like that. They're just, they're hitting kind of a, a, a different nerve with people because they're living life differently. To stay relevant, does not mean you need to talk about the coronavirus. That's exactly right. We, um, I, I've seen amazing work from Great Wolf Lodge, which is a, a um, set of uh, regional water parks across the country. Obviously the water parks are closed right now. That's extremely difficult for any business. Uh, but what they did was they immediately pivoted to really at home entertainment. You know, at the parks, they do yoga with the characters that they have there. And so they launched a series in record time called Yoga Tales, which is a um, really a storytelling and yoga experience that parents and kids can do together. It was one of the, the best examples that I've seen of a very quick pivot uh, and an ability um, to really make it about beyond their traditional way of doing business. That's awesome. That's very so, cute idea. So, yeah. uh, the, the other thing what that just brought to mind for me is this idea of the types of content too. I, I don't know as we've talked too much about types as far as like there's video content, there's articles, there's social posts, there's various things like that. Really kind of figuring out the best way to tell your story or, or using that content to really be um, the center of your business model. I mean, Great Wolf Lodge is a perfect example. You're also seeing that in dance studios and karate studios. And, and um, you know, I, I think some of the fitness centers like um, are, are doing the same thing and trying to bring classes into the home. And it's just a different model. It'll be interesting to see what comes out um, of all of this and see if this is a new way that people live or if it's a, if it's a short term thing. But content really allows you that opportunity to more than many other things it allows you to kind of embrace this new time and, and think about your business. Yeah, absolutely. I think there will probably be a lot of 
longer lived changes from this than we thought there would be. Robin, we actually have a question coming in from Facebook Live. I think this is for Vistaprint. So I hope you can take this. They're asking, are we printing masks? Uh, great question. Um, we are, um, and um, we'll be getting out further information about that. Vistaprint has shifted its model. Um, we're, we're going to be um, ramping this up in many of our um, facilities going forward, and we're pretty excited about it. Um, we're also doing some face shields, which is another um, exciting product. Um, and, and it's really all um, similar to the way we were talking here. I, you know, Vistaprint is just like, like a small business in that we need to think about how we are going to support our customers in different ways. And in some cases, it really is about how we're supporting small businesses with um, our products and our services. And in other ways, it's taking the facilities and things that we have and finding a way to pivot to really support the greater good. So um, we're really, yeah, thanks for asking the question. Awesome, thank you. That's good to hear. Carrie, I actually have one for you. Um, someone would like to know where is the bingo card? Because it's sounds- ah! It's on Instagram under likable media. Um, it was posted in stories, but I, I think um, it should be in one of the highlights. And if not, hopefully someone from likable is watching will get it up in the stories. It's so much fun. It is. I can vouch for that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Robin, question about testing and learning. Maybe you can take this one. So you talked about testing and learning from the different types of content that you're putting out. And do you have suggestions for how to create and approach a content test so that I can make sure I get some learnings from it? Yeah, it's a good question right now. It all depends. If you have some money to invest to do some paid media, then testing, you're, you're in a whole world of testing. You can get all sorts of, of information back, especially from social. Um, but if you're doing things more organically, those, those things that you can learn um, it becomes a little bit harder to aggregate all that data. But that being said, there's still great things and great things you can do. So um, I definitely think that on social media, you want to be watching your comments and your engagement with your posts. You want to be seeing how many people are engaging. You want to be able to see what kind of comments they have. Um, in addition to that, I would definitely use your channels to reach out to your customers and get feedback. So just ask. Um, this is a great time to do that as well. Um, I, I mean, email, you can do open rates or social, you can get engagement rates. You can get some of that data on your post. But I think sometimes the one thing we just forget to do is to just ask. And, um, and I, that would be probably um, a big win um, from my side of things to just find out what people are looking for and pivot to that. Yes. Sarah, do you have anything to add? You look like you might. <laughs> I, for me, yeah, I mean, I think I totally agree. I think, do you guys remember life before Facebook and all of these things became these sophisticated testing tools? You know, I've, I've been working in social media since 2007. So before there were even, when it mattered if you followed a page, when it mattered if, uh, you know, what you posted organically, these were different times because now um, there's this sophisticated ad model where you can do these tests. What Robin's talking about, you could figure out a million things. But now when small businesses and most businesses are holding on to every penny as much as they can because they need to watch what happens here, this is a time to get back to that, like to get back to the organic content and see how it's doing. And, and one of the benefits, just really looking at what people respond to, what are the benefits that people are online at Facebook, uh, time on Facebook is up like 70%. And so people are there and the organic content, and that's with Instagram too, the organic content is getting a little more play. And so I would encourage you to get back to the old school roots if you remember them and just look at what works and look at what doesn't. And, and of course, you always start, like Robin said, just to echo asking your customers, asking for feedback, and, um, and really starting with that. Thank you. I actually have a suggestion here in the questions, or a, a question, and then if the answer is no, a suggestion okay. for us at Vistaprint. Um, Robin, can Vistaprint design, or do we have a custom background screen that customers could use as a digital background on their Zoom backgrounds and that they could upload? 
It is a great question that I honestly don't know the answer to, but I think I should take it back and, and yeah. find out for you. Um, what, we will do that. I don't know the answer, but I think it's a great ask. That is an exact example of listening to your community and getting feedback directly from them and being able to take an idea that comes out of a Facebook Live or you know any of these, these webinars and, and be able to turn it into something. Wouldn't it be amazing if from that suggestion, you were able to do it? How cool would Absolutely. that be? Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Any more? Yeah. What else you got, Corey? So we'll make a note of that, but um, it would also be fantastic um, for the person who submitted that question, if you have a moment to drop that suggestion in, home office hours at vistaprint.com. It always helps us when we have an email to go back to, but we'll definitely take this as a note as well. Absolutely. Great. Um, so we had a few other questions in here. Carrie, maybe you can start us with this one. Do you have a place or a source that you recommend when you're looking for inspiration and creative stories for building your new content? Well, I do a few different things. So first of all, um, I, when I go for inspiration, typically, um, I will read a lot of what some of the, um, some of the best in class st stuff. I read Ad Week, Brand Week, the journal, I, I read it all, um, all the marketing sections and I use it unmashable, anything for inspiration. I love when I see great stuff. Like I saw when P&G um, did the social distancing TikTok with Charlie, the influencer, Chickie D, and they all waived their fees. And like, to me, like, I'm like oh, this is such inspiration. I want our agency to do that. So I would, I would look for um, two things. First of all, anything within your trade that is inspiring. So I follow people that I think are inspiring within my world. Um, definitely read a lot of marketing publications. Um, and then, yeah, I, I look at best in class stuff because oh, it, it allows me, for me, what I do is I build off of. So if I see something brilliant, it'll spark an idea. And, and when, the more I read and the more time I spend reading, the more it allows me um, to, to play off and think of something else. And it doesn't always have to be so related to social media marketing. Like sometimes I'll be reading something or listening to music or something, and it just allows me to think and have the idea. So there's two things. First, I would say read in the marketing world and, and follow best in class brands that you admire. Uh, and then second thing I would do actually um, for the best inspiration for content is to step away from the computer and the phone step away. My best ideas come to me always in the shower. I say this all the time in my talks because I'm literally naked away from all of the things and it allows me just a moment to be inspired and think. And because you're, you're getting an influx of such information, um, sometimes the information needs to come from within you too. So absorb the information, go to best in class brands, read lots of great marketing blogs, any of that stuff, and then take time away from the computer. And, and allow yourself to think on your own. Use that to inspire you, but truly get your spark from within you because I believe that that's where most genius for small business owners come from is you, know, you started the business, this is your baby, and nobody is gonna fight harder for it to succeed and nobody's gonna focus on being more creative than you. Uh, I would just, it's so great. Um, I would add a couple other things. One is, definitely look into things like Facebook groups or yes. um, other communities that you can join. Um, those, yeah. are, those are just a plethora of information um, yeah. that, that you can um, see how other people like-minded like you. So it's, it's actually, there are so many that are, that are so niche that, you know, ballet teachers can talk to ballet teachers, <laughs> you know, um, bakers can talk to bakers, and you can find out some of these great ideas around the country or around the world. Um, and then the other one is to just look at, you know, your competitors and, and check out their sites and see what they're doing, even just locally. Um, and you might find that there might even be an opportunity during this time to partner um, yes. instead, of, instead of just um, getting their ideas, but actually working on it together. Yeah, I love that. We have a lot of dance studios in town that partner together to form this virtual dance studio, which is so heartwarming and amazing. And I think at a time, you know, many people get psyched out by their competitors a lot of the times like when you're looking at stuff and you, you you end up getting like very jealous if you see something going first um use it to really fuel you and inspire you and potentially partner and plus 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 yes on the facebook groups that is a brilliant suggestion it's a great place 
This is awesome, guys. Thank you. And we actually have a question um, about Facebook groups right now. So how can I use my Facebook group to pay it forward and access my group with e-commerce and also use it to test new content for sensitivity? Carrie, can you start us on that one? Or sorry, oh, Robin, sure. you looked like you were just about to say something. No, that's okay. So there's, it sounds like there's three things you want to do. You want to test e-commerce, um, test the content. What was the first one? Corey, Using the Facebook group to pay it forward and access the group with e-commerce and test new content for sensitivity. Okay, so to be able to answer this totally perfectly, I would need to know what the Facebook group was, what's the size, et cetera. But I'm going to assume that if this is a Facebook group, um, it's going to act sort of as a, face, uh, a focus group for your broader community, that you have a group of people that already know and love you and have an interest in stuff. Um, there are other assumptions I could make. You could have, you could run a Facebook group for um, people who love bike riding and you have a totally different type of business. Uh, the first thing I would do is just make sure that the group is relevant to the business. The second thing I would do is be extremely transparent about what you want to do. Hi guys, I'm looking for feedback on my content. Would you be open to giving some and ask permission? Um, and the third thing I would do is thank them if and when they say yes, and then uh, explain how often you'll be doing that. Because if, if you're shifting a group, groups, there's a real hierarchy to groups and there's a real, like there's an administrator and they usually delete comments and all kinds of stuff. Um, and, and creating smart rules for the group is essential. Like if you're in a parents group, you only promote small business on the first Tuesday of the month in the Port Washington parents group. And you only, you know, you can't, post about this, that, and the other. So I would, um, first, I would ask if this is okay, if the community is open to it. Second, I would really adapt it uh, to the rules and, and follow it very specifically. And third, I would make sure to be very gracious and thank them. Yeah, and I just want to be clear on the, I, I agree with everything you said, Carrie. Um, the pay it forward, make sure you're legitimately trying to pay it forward and that it's not um, self-serving. Um, it, it can, they are going to see right through you. You just, to Carrie's point, you need to be very upfront with what you're doing. You need to ask permission and thank. Um, it's, there's no issue with getting in touch with the administrators and asking them if they're okay with things. Um, they're just people and, and they're just, they're, they're making the call to be legit in their group. You just don't want to come across as someone who has kind of, um, hijacked a group for your own purpose. You want to make sure it is feeding a need that the group really needs. Yes. Yes, totally agree. And on the pay it forward front, um, one of the reasons that Charity Water is so successful is that they are very clear about where their money goes and they show you exactly like if you can, if you contribute to Charity Water, you know where the well is that you helped get clean water and who you helped and how. And so Robin earlier made an amazing point about showing pictures of the meals being delivered and that kind of stuff. You know, when you're paying it forward, just make sure that you're really showing it and that it's real and transparent because there's going to be a lot of that out there right now, a lot. And um, if you are going to pay it forward, which I'm suggesting that we all do if we can, um, certainly be transparent about it and show the impact. Perfect. Thank you both. So we're getting up to just having a few minutes left. So I'm going to do one more question here and then we'll close it. That's out. so fun. It went so fast. It's so it was fun. <laughs> so <Let's> do session two. <laughs> <laughs> totally. We can. And our time. <laughs> so last question here. It's already been a few weeks since the pandemic started. And I'm afraid that it will take me at least a week to change my content strategy. Will it be too late? Should I not post anything new until I change it? I think you probably both have some wisdom here, but Robin, can we start with you? Yeah, I, I would say, um, to be honest, that my, my biggest hurdle in, in that question is that it's gonna take you a week. I don't think it needs to take you a week. I, I think you can, um, honestly, in these times, I feel like a day is a month. The life is just changing and evolving and you just need to kind of evolve with it. And it goes back to that test and learn strategy. If you wait a week to create something that you think is so, so perfect, at, by a week from now, things could be so, so different. 
And so just be very um, open to small changes. You don't have to completely redo your brand. You don't have to completely overhaul your content strategy. Take pieces of it. Take things that you think could be, um, could make the biggest impact. You don't have to do it all, um, but find those spaces where you think it, um, you can make the biggest impact and focus there first. I do think time is of the essence right now to, to really make sure that you've got a, a plan for your content, um, even if it's making small changes instead of creating the whole new thing. Yes. I would just say no matter what, don't, don't post business as usual. Um, with very few exceptions, I think it's really, um, I, I would pause. If it takes you a week and your content is not essential to your growth um, because you're focused, like it depends on, on what you're doing. I mean, if you're focused on cash flow and you're focused on other stuff and you can't do it right now, then I would pause. But I, I really would um, try, like Robin said, to shift as quickly as possible. Um, some of the, the thing where it'll take me time, um, some of that is about fear. We don't know as small businesses what to say or what to do. It's a scary time. None of us ever got into business thinking, hey, one day I'm going to lead this team through a pandemic and it's going to be great. We got into business because we like dogs or we were good at cutting hair or, you know, whatever it is. No, none of us thought we'd be here and we're here. So I, I would just encourage you to push past whatever fear that is holding you back, um, shift, and definitely don't post, post uh, business as usual. Well, thank you both so much. I hope this has been really helpful to everybody. I know I learned a lot today. We are going to wrap it up for today, but we're going to be hosting these discussions twice a week going forward. We'll have one more this Friday. And from there, we are going to be shifting to every Tuesday and Thursday at noon. We'll be covering a ton of different topics, but we definitely want your help for that. So please be sure to fill out the survey at the end of the webinar. Let us know what you want to hear. As I said before, you can also send your questions to home office hours at pistprint.com and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. Stay up to date on what's coming up next. Let us know what you want to hear. On Friday, you can tune in for running your business online. And you can always find more information in the meantime by visiting vistaprint.com and you can check out our support small business hub. So before we go really quickly, I'd like to ask each of our panelists for their number one final thought from the conversation. Robin, can you share with us? Sure. Um, I would make sure that, well, it kind of goes back to just what Carrie was saying, but don't always do what you've always done. Sit back, listen to your customers, and make sure you are adapting to their needs. Thank you. And Carrie, how about you? I mean, as a small business owner, all you know, I have lots of thoughts from uh, this webinar, but but what I really want to say is just hang in there. We're all in it together. Take advantage of every resource you can right now and use your content as the vehicle that can communicate not only who you, you know, we can't communicate who we were yesterday right now. It's who we want to be today. So you use that, use that content uh, to survive and we are all in it together. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much for your time being panelists today. And thank you everybody who joined for your curiosity and your time. We really appreciate it. We hope this has been helpful for you. And this has been Home Office Hours Live with Vistaprint. We'll talk with you soon. Thanks, Corey. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Corey. Bye.